Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Here we are, episode five of I Called That. I'm Martin Montana, he's Charlie Marlowe. This is a big one, this is a big episode because now we have something, Charlie, to talk about that we did watch, uh, and that would be the Super Bowl. That's always a good thing. Uh, let me ask you this first, where did you watch and, and what was your uh, viewing experience? Okay, so my, my viewing experience, first of all, and we can get into the whole fact that my entire family was sick all weekend long and that kind of ruined my entire super bowl experience where everybody is literally vomiting and oh. having to go to the bathroom a lot mm. as as happens sometimes and then when the super bowl comes when you can't hold food down you really have no interest in eating like the super bowl spread so it's more about water gatorades hey can i can i keep this granola bar down so so that are was you happening. wait are you sick are you are you sick too i i threw up a ton oh. sunday sunday morning probably six seven o'clock i threw up more than i've ever thrown up since my crazy college days of drinking and this was not because of drinking i think i think what we have is that norovirus it's not the rona but if you look up norovirus and a it's bunch like, of people, it's like the new, uh, it's like this year's flu, right? Yes. This version. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's no fun. So basically I had no interest in eating for the Super Bowl whatsoever. I wasn't drinking anything except for Gatorade. And then also Super Bowl starts at about 545 local time here. I'm in the uh, central time zone. And at about 520, my wife said, uh, hey, we got to go get those Valentines for, uh, for my daughter, for her class, because today's Valentine's Day. By the way, happy Valentine's Day, Martin. Yes, thank you for saying that to me. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, just a little tip for all the people watching and listening. If you go out and try to find the kids' Valentine's cards the day before Valentine's Day, they're not anywhere. I went to freaking Walgreens, Target, a grocery store, CVS, then I called Walmart. I actually ended up buying construction paper so the first, the first half of the first quarter, I'm driving around finding Valentine's, but I couldn't find them. And then the, the rest of the first half, I'm cutting out hearts. I'm cutting out hearts in red, pink construction nice. paper and making handmade Valentine's. That's how I spent the first half. Dude, if I'm, work, if I'm like a teenager working at CVS and you walk in and I know it's the Super Bowl, so I'm already pissed that you know I'm, I'm working, making 10 bucks an hour and you come in. And you're like, would you have kids? I'm like, who is this guy? And why is he not home or at a bar or doing something fun at a party? You got to be looking for, for cards. Like I would, I would really judge you. And I, and I, and I, it wouldn't be positive things I'd be thinking. Well, you're hundred percent correct in that judgment. <laughs> and that's the one part though, the best time ever, like from now on, I mean, I'm always going to want to watch the Super Bowl, So this doesn't really make sense, but if you ever want it, just the roads to yourself. If you ever want the roads to yourself, just go and drive around during the Super Bowl. Yeah, yes. You will see Charlie Marlowe uh, <laughs> in his uh, in his station wagon, um, frantically looking on his phone at Google Maps, trying to figure out uh, the next pharmacy to hit because, uh, you know, he's already gone to five. So he's, he's going to mm -hmm. find what he's looking for. Um, is that why I'm looking at you now? Is that why you uh, looks like you're in the basement? Have you relocated? You uh, you almost look like you're starting a ministry. And this is your first, uh, <laughs> this is your first, uh, what do you think? Like telethon where you're just, you're just asking for money. You just want, it's a GoFundMe at this point. Pretty much. This is my, uh, I'm, I'm a televangelist now. That's, uh, this is, this light represents God. <laughs> and he's, he's kind of saying, agree with everything Charlie says and do what he says and, right. and give me your money and, uh, and do all of that. Yeah. I'm downstairs because the daughter's homesick from school. Mm -hmm. My wife is not feeling too great. So she's not at work. So I just didn't want to be upstairs with all of the craziness. I got you. Look, I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. That's no fun. And, and I have a similar story, but it's a self-inflicted similar story. All right. So you, you, like, you get a complete pass because, I mean, you, you know, you have real illness. This is a real virus. So uh, I'm still hungover from Saturday. Okay. So my wife and I went over to, I have a cousin who lives in Orlando. It's like a two-hour drive from where I'm at. And, uh, and this had been planned for a little while. So I thought it was, you know, great. We'll go over there Saturday. We're going to bring the dog, bring, bring our daughter and, uh, we'll have some fun and then we'll drive back. We'll have plenty of time, you know, I'm East coast. So 
six thirty, right, is the uh, the start time here. So it, it sounds great, right? And and it was going great. We were there, barbecuing, hanging out. Eva, our daughter, she did great. She had a great time. She we put her down her bedtime six thirty. She goes down. We got the monitor. Then it's adult time, right? And then we're hanging out at eight, nine, ten o'clock. I made the flip from beers during the day to whiskey. And I realized that, you know, when I'm at home and I make a whiskey, it's not, you know, no one measures unless you're a psychopath. I mean, I, I pour a drink, but if I have one drink, let's be honest, it's probably three shots in there. You know, sure. it's a big glass with ice, but then that's it. I have one. And then maybe I have a wine or two and, and that's it. That's, that's kind of the pattern I'm in right now. Well, when I flipped to whiskey, I drank it all night till two in the morning. I don't like, you know, when you do something and you're like, who do you think you are? Like, where do you get, like, you lecture yourself the next day? Where, like, who, like, you're, you're past your forties, bro. Like, did you think like this wouldn't affect you in any way, shape or form? And my, and my wife was drinking wine. She was drinking rosé. And, and when we, you know, when this all clashed and we get up our, you know, our daughter wakes up at seven something, which was great. She, she can wake up at five forty-five or six. But we wake up and we are done. We are, we are splitting headaches. We're nauseous all day. And I'm like, I said to my wife, I'm like, well, at least you drank wine. She's like, I, had, I probably had two bottles of wine. <laughs> it, was, it was horrible, man. And, and you know, and now you got you to gotta take care of your kid. And the kid wants to run around. And, you know, I got the dog. I'm trying to pack, of course, because we filled up an SUV for one night stay. You know that. We've talked about that. I got to pack up the car. It's raining. And then we all get in the car. Not 20 minutes into the ride to Tampa, Eva's, Eva has a blowout. So I got to pull over to the gas station and be that guy who like doesn't get gas and is you know, rummaging through. And then my wife's nauseous. I'm nauseous. <laughs> Change her there. Go. I mean, awful. Get home, unload the car. You know, my wife's hanging on by a thread. I'm like, I don't, this is terrible. I ordered food. I'm like, well, I'm ordering pizza and wings, <laughs> like out of desperation, you know, to have some kind of Super Bowl party. All right, let's throw that word out there. <laughs> the Super Bowl turns into my wife goes to bed after five minutes of the game, 10 minutes. She's like, I don't even know why I'm watching this. I, I, could, I don't care about this. I'm going to bed. And I'm like, well, I'm going to watch the game because I, I genuinely want to watch this game. And I do but I do it drinking water and, you know, nibbling on some cold pizza that I had delivered at three o'clock. And it was just a really pathetic, sad. Um, it was probably the first time in my adult life that I watched the Super Bowl and didn't even have a beer. And I did that to myself. So unlike you, Charlie, I mean, you get off the hook because you know, your family got something. We, me and my wife, we did it to ourselves. It happens, you know, either way, whichever way is, is the reason for it. Like it was an awful day for me. I mean, I don't want to say the Super Bowl was ruined, but this is another thing I think we don't think about as, as much, you know, back in the day when you're drinking a ton, you, you and I've had some good times, you know, Vegas, Dewey beach and all that, where you're just drinking nonstop, but also then you just go pass out. And the next day you wake up whenever you want. All right. You recover. Yeah. But when you drink and you're a parent, and then you got to wake up and actually parent and you have human beings that rely on you. I mean, Sunday morning, my wife and I are so sick that all we want to do is just lay in bed. That's all we want to do. And then the, the baby starts crying yeah. and then my daughter wants something. And it's just like, so, so take all being hung over and feeling terrible and feeling sick. And then you have to care for these people. And my, my son's up there crying and I'm just like, please stop crying. Like I, I would have done anything to have my son just, just stop crying. So I wouldn't have to go up there because all you want to do is lay in bed. Yeah. So it's all of those feelings and emotions with just a nice sprinkling of guilt on top, you know, cause right. <laughs> my daughter didn't, she didn't do anything. She didn't do anything wrong. And we get home and she, yeah, she wants to run around. She's got energy. She's, Sprint around the house and wants to go outside and, and I'm doing it all, but right. I'm like, Oh man, if there's one day that you could just want to just chill here and play in your playroom and just, you know, just maybe sit there within my eyes view and not do it. But it's uh, we did it to ourselves, but let's turn the page, Charlie, because here's what we did. Right. Okay. Both of us. 
Okay. And that's what we did is we called it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We said the Bengals taking the points and the under. And I mentioned last time on our last episode, I said, I have to get back to what I do well. And that's make parlays and, you know, more outlandish bets. So I didn't go crazy, but I did parlay that. And I even got it at minus four. I know some people got it at four and a half, which yes. is a little safer, especially with that extra point. We can talk about that. But I got it at four and I was like, all right, maybe, you know, this could be a uh, sort of push on half of it, but I took it and 48 and a half, the points. And man, that last fourth quarter and half of the third, I even like, I sent out, I sent out a tweet. I'm like, well, you know, when you're watching a game, you just want them to punt nonstop because of your bet. <laughs> I was like, I've seen enough action. I've seen enough scoring. It's been a great game. Right now, I, got, I just need you guys to not score more than, you know, 14 points for like 15 points or whatever it was at the time. And they didn't. And it was amazing. Uh, but I do want to ask you about the Rams and how that's parlaying in your area. So first of all, congratulations to you and to me. Yes. For, for that winning bet. No doubt. So I did place uh, both those bets, not as a parlay. I felt, you know, going in, you just... Like, I don't know what I'm doing, but you just feel better about one side or the other. I felt better about the under than I did about the, uh, the Bengals staying within four and a half. I got it at four and a half. And I think you can also even make the case. I mean, when, when OBJ went down, yes. I mean, that was a huge turning point. Don't get me wrong. I, I wanted the Rams to lose because of what they did to St. Louis. I wanted the Rams to lose and I wanted my bet to win because of how I placed the bet. But I also kind of look at things. I try to look at things pretty fair and uh, OBJ when he was hurt and he didn't come back, you could tell the Rams offense. It just wasn't the same. I mean, they didn't, they didn't do anything until that final drive. And you, you know, like I was expecting uh, an interception or two from Stafford and one was obviously his fault completely. But then that other one, which was a critical time in the game too, was not. And that was that other guy, I forget his name, that w- came in because OBJ is out. Otherwise, he wouldn't be on the field. And he just, you know, couldn't, couldn't get his hands on it, tips it up in the air. And that's, that was that second, that other pick. So, yeah, I'm watching it too. And I'm like, this, they disappeared. I really thought the Bengals had it. Even, even as they were marching in, had they, you know, I want to get your thoughts on that defensive holding call that, that puts them right there first and goal. I didn't like that call. I mean, but then again, to be fair, they missed the face mask on Ramsey, right? For, uh, for T Higgins touchdown where he just kind of pulled him sideways by his face. So maybe you could argue those even out. I know, you know, it's easy to look back and pick apart refs, but at at that time of the game, I just, I hate those calls like that. I hate those calls like that. Yeah, me too. And and what you said is a hundred percent true. Because I think sometimes we like to play the conspiracy theory card, especially with the NFL. You could really play this card specifically with the Rams, where you basically have a league-wide initiative, and this is true, behind closed doors to move the team from St. Louis to L.A., and everybody was in on it, Goodell and Jerry Jones and Stan Kroenke. And And so I'm not Mr. Conspiracy Theory. But when you look at the way the Rams got to the Super Bowl the last time, remember remember that that non-call on pass interference against the Saints? No, right. no, no, okay. vaguely. No, it was like the worst the worst non-call in the history of sports. It was when the the Rams got to the Super Bowl about four years ago. So Sean McVay's first time in the Super Bowl. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. Where he just he just throws them down. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when yeah. I thought, that, I thought you were going way back to the to Kurt Warner days. I'm like, no, nah, I don't remember. Anything. No. So this was like four years ago, whenever it was that the Rams, they mm-hmm. went there and they lost to the Patriots. I think it was 13 to three. Yeah. So when you look at that call, and you're like, man, that's that's such an easy call to make. And it's not made. And then just the Rams getting to L.A. and they just they're about to be sued and go to a trial with St. Louis and and they settle and then, you know, it's in their, it's in their home stadium. It's yep. in LA. They build this beautiful stadium. The stadium is unbelievable, by the way. And then, then you get that holding call at the end where, like I said, I'm not Mr. Conspiracy Theory, but when, when you see a couple things like that, 
it does make you wonder, and, and I'm, I'm with you hundred percent, the Jalen Ramsey, the non-call in the face mask on that 75 yard touchdown. I mean, yeah. that was a huge non-call and you can make the case that they, they balance each other out. But for a game that I thought was really, really um, called in a way that allowed guys to just play football, which I think is the way people want to watch football. They don't want to see flags all day long. So the fact that they allowed them to play all game, and then you have a very ticky tack holding on the most crucial play of the game. You know, like I said, we're here in St. Louis, we're going to bitch and complain no matter what, but you know, I just, I just didn't like that. I think that was one where you swallow the whistle. I think so too. I, I thought, uh, you know, I, I was torn just being, you know, other than my bet, of course, Rudy, you know, I, you can make great cases for Stafford to get a ring and for Burrow to get a ring, you know, um, you were really like, and then even OBJ, when he got hurt, I was like, oh man, this guy was dominating, dominating the game. I was like, I kind of want him to get a ring. You know, I'm watching. I'm like, I was like, Oprah, I'm like, I want to give everyone rings. You know, I'm like, man, <laughs> but the conspiracy theory about LA is it's, it, you know, it may not be so far away, right? Let's be honest. We've got big money on the line. We've got that stadium. Two you what two years old? SoFi. I saw the SoFi CEO doing interviews this morning on on like investment shows on like Squawk Box. I mean, the PR is unbelievable. So look at the dollars that matter behind what's happening. So I'll jump in on you. I'll go conspiracy theory. Maybe so, not all the way up, maybe not all the way down the line, but you could, you know. It just makes it makes you wonder when you have a couple things happen. Again, the way they got to the Super Bowl the last time around. And then uh, the call at the end, like I said, I'm not, I'm not blaming it on that, but it is kind of easy if you go to social media that people will, well, why are they throwing this flag for a game that there was no flags for basically the entire game? I do think though, and then this is me being fair. I think the best team won because yeah. look, the Bengals, what did they win? They were 10 and seven. So they got super hot in the postseason. They had a bad offensive line all year. They were like the 20th ranked offensive yeah. line in football. They had the game against the Titans where they allowed, I think it was nine sacks. Yesterday, they allowed seven. Aaron Donald just blew them up the second half. I mean, the mm -hmm. second half, the Rams pass rush absolutely just destroyed that game. So I do think the better team won. There's a reason the Rams were favored. And if OBJ doesn't get hurt, I think that game, we, we probably don't win our best, to be honest with you. I, I think the Rams probably win by a touchdown plus if OBJ is in there. And I say that just because it's not just him catching the ball. But him be, being able to stretch the field, be another legit weapon alongside Cooper Cup, and they didn't have Tyler Higby either. You know, the Rams couldn't run the ball all game long. All so, game long. So when OBJ went out, that offense, which was clicking pretty good, went to just stagnant. I think you're right. I think both the under and the points would have been blown up pretty easily. The way that game started, I was, I was, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I was like. I was like, oh, what a terrible bet. Who places that bet? And then, you know, fourth quarter, once, once, once they're down there, I'm like, I think this is a lock. This is a great bet. This is a great pick. Well, that's where <laughs> it's funny. Watch, did you watch the, uh, did you watch the halftime show? hundred percent. I was into yeah. it. And I also thought I, it was I was funny. Into it. I thought it was funny. There's this kind of debate and maybe I pay too much attention to uh, Twitter. There was this debate because somebody said, Hey, this halftime show, it's for millennials. And then all these gen is it Gen X is the is the generation before, and they're like, hey, this is our music, and uh, whatever doesn't matter because I think that I think the millennial term is wrong in terms of when they start the year, which is 1980. I actually don't think I'm a millennial. We could get into that moving forward mm -hmm. uh, because I think the generations are more based on technology than yeah. a year. So to me, your, your technology changes with cell phones, with Facebook. That's where the generations shift, in my opinion. But either way, yeah. it was funny. It was fun to see the dudes who are all like 50 now. I mean, Dre, Snoop, <laughs> I think Eminem's 49. Yeah. Um, I also, <laughs> you know, these people are very, they're very fun, funny, and very creative on social media. 50 Cent. So 50 Cent comes out and look, clearly he's not, uh, neither am I. I'm not as in good shape as 2001 or whenever that song came out, but people were acting like he was like, Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, all the memes, 
and all the jokes about inflation and 50 cent is now a dollar. I did, uh, I did enjoy those, but I get it. He put on, he put on some weight, but it wasn't like he was super sloppy. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not like, I mean, you know, he, he wasn't, um, he wasn't fat Albert. I mean, he, you know, he wasn't yeah. some cartoonish character out there, but that look, that's, that's the beauty. That's like the, the quote unquote beauty of social media is because I guess in a way, cause I always bash social media. Cause I think it's, I think it's insanity, but it's terrible. But if that's what everybody at home would be thinking, now they just get to say it and I'll laugh about it. And there, and then you're just you're seeing everybody do the same thing. To me, it it's it, um it's different than just thinking it because they they have some sort of like camaraderie around it. Like, yeah, look at him. He's yeah, look at him. He's not as in good shape as he was 20 years ago, which is the dumbest argument I've ever heard. Show me, show me who that is, who is, is in better shape uh, in their forties than their twenties. <laughs> I just, I want to meet them, you know, and I want to ask them what's wrong. Why don't they drink? Um, but yeah, it, it was, it was silly. I, I liked the show. I did. I'm usually not a big halftime show because to me, I, I just always feel like it's, it's like Lady Gaga, you know, for years or whatever. And I just, I always think it's the same thing. It's her or JLo or something. And I'm like, I, I don't, I'm really not that interested, but yeah, it was cool. I mean, it's nostalgic. That's, I mean, I, you know, I listen to all that. So I'm like, okay, this is cool. And the other funny meme that I really uh, saw a ton was, so Eli Apple, who likes to talk some smack and went to Ohio State. I know he, I think he started with, uh, was it the, the Giants? Uh, was he with the Giants? The Giants, first? right. Yeah. So big first round pick, but hasn't really lived up to that, but kind of had this uh, second wind with, uh, with the Bengals. And then at the end, he's having to check Cooper Cup. And Cooper Cup is unguardable, by the way. The dude's open on every single freaking play. But I saw this meme, and it was it was like Eli Apple trying to figure out how to guard Cooper Cup. And it was this guy, and you could tell he was in, like, the basement of a, of a supercomputer with yeah, all the that's... buttons and all the wires. And he was just kind of looking at it like, you know, he's just, he's staring at the supercomputer right. with no idea how to do anything. And that's Eli Apple trying to guard uh, Cooper cup. I don't know if you saw that one, but it's pretty fun. I didn't see that one, but that's, that's a good one. I mean, that's the guy, the guy is open every play. And then when, when I see that, I'm like, so is he, what is it? Like if he just, if we lined him up and asked him to do a shuttle run, like he just wins every time. Is he just that quick? Is that what okay. it is? So now sometimes I steal other people's takes. Um, I have to admit as I was, as I was driving to radio today, so I'm in my car about, uh, six, whatever, six 30, six 40. And I usually try to either listen national radio, it's ESPN or on our, uh, our local radio, their national program on five ninety is, uh, it's LeVar Arrington and, uh, Brady Quinn, but I was listening to ESPN this morning. So it's Max Kellerman and Keyshawn Johnson and, uh, what Jay Williams, I think. Yeah. And yeah, so, Jason Williams. Yeah. yeah. So Keyshawn Johnson had a great take, which I agree with. And, you know, we infuse race into everything these days too much. But with Cooper Cup, he's like, here's the deal. People see this dude that's white and they think he's just this slot guy. He's this gritty white guy. And he goes, Cooper Cup is 6'2", 215 and is super fast and runs incredible routes. So it's almost like you look at the scrappy white receiver and you're just thinking, how can this dude catch 150 balls for 2000 yards and a million touchdowns? But we're, we're doing like reverse racism yeah, because yeah. we're basically saying this white guy can't be athletic. And, and he said that I go, he's right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a good take. It is a good take. Cause you're, you're almost like, um, yeah. How did he, wow. He got open. Oh, look, they're, they're, they're lining him up on the outside. Oh, whoa, this is crazy. Look, he, he beat someone on a deep route. How did he do that? Right. It's like, well, he's fast. He's, he's faster than the other guy. I mean, what's the story? You know, no one goes, no one goes berserk when Jamar chase blazes by someone. They're like, yeah, he's a talented receiver. He's great. They're like, wow. <laughs> That's a good one. I'll buy that. No, he said I'll it. Buy that. He's right. He's right. And it's just one of those things. Like we always, we always do this in sports where, and, and some of the players would joke about this. I remember when our Rams were here, <laughs> but uh, Chris Long and James Laurinaitis. Chris I Long, came, U UVA. 
Yep. Chris Long UVA yep. and uh, Laura Nias from Ohio State. And they would go back and forth kind of joking that if it was a white player in the draft, you know, they're gritty. Uh, they have a high motor, uh, sneaky, athletic. And it's kind of just the way to, to say like, oh, they're not very athletic. They're like the coach's son, but they really try hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So I think sometimes those, uh, those, uh, what would you call that? Um, I don't know, like a implicit bias or something that creeps into our mind in, in sports, I think too. Yeah. Like a subconscious deal. Yeah. I have a completely unrelated question. I saw one of your tweets about curling. You put some like photo, a little, a little, uh, a little gif. Sure. I say gif, not gif. Uh, okay. And I turned on for two, for two seconds. I said, let me turn on the Olympic channel. And it was curling. It was mixed dull, like mixed doubles curling. Did you see anything about this? Or Listen, it's, man. It's a, it's a, but here's my question. It's a guy and a girl. They're a team. They're a curling team. Okay. Now most, I'm, I'm going to go and make some assumptions here. Most curlers, even, even if you're good enough to go to the Olympics, you don't make your full living off that. Right. Like you go home and you work in it or do something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then no, you get some sponsors maybe and you do, and you go to live. It's, it's look, I mean, you have the skill that I don't have. I'm not saying that, but it's not like you're making your full living, just being a curler. Correct me if I'm wrong. So my question is this, and, and this is where I, if we were like doing a live show, I'd put a poll up in the thing, right? You're a married man. I'm a married man. If you got into curling and you, you became pretty good at it, like really good. And the opportunity came up. They said, you know, the, the, the coach, I'm assuming there's a coach of the curling team. He said, Charlie, I want, I'm going to pair you up for the mixed, mixed doubles. We think we, you, we think if, if we pair you up correctly, we'll get you to the Olympics. Uh, here's your, you know, here's your partner. Um, you know, whoever she is, Svetlana, she's 25, uh, pretty attractive young, young girl here. You guys are going to train together five nights a week. And if you make it, you're going to go off and of course, and compete, uh, far, far away, far, far away overseas. Is your wife okay with that? Probably not, especially if, if young <laughs> Svetlana, you know, cause as you know, I mean, most of the real hot chicks are usually curlers. I mean, you've, you've kind of seen that, uh, you know, the bikini calendars and all that. I, I could see though, how I bet you, and I, I it's, could a, it's a decent question, right? Cause I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm watching these couples. I'm like, they're not all a cup. They're not all a couple. That doesn't mean they're dating or they're married because it's a sport. They're competing together. I bet you though. I bet you that there's something going on there. I bet you there's been marriages that have been destroyed based on mixed doubles curling mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe they're both single. They spend so much time around each other. One night they have a few drinks. Next thing you know, they have a, they have a, a torrid affair. Maybe it doesn't last, but I would think if you're training with somebody from the opposite sex year round, I, I just think you spend so much time around each other. I guarantee you there's some of that stuff going on in curling. Guarantee it. I mean, this could be the story. This could be, if we were out there on the ground, this would be something I'd be trying to break. I'm not going to lie to you. This is something I'm interested in. Well, look, this, now off the top of my head, hasn't there been several stories of, of a coach and then, you know, let's say it's a track coach mm -hmm. with the woman who's, who's uh, the, the, the pupil. And I feel like they get married. I feel like we see that. Yeah. Was it, uh, was it Bob Kersey? I should know this because Jackie Joyner Kersey is from, is from St. Louis, but I feel like there are just over the years, there's stories of, uh, of coaches in different mm -hmm. sports. And then all of a sudden they train the woman and then they get married. Right. I mean, that happens. Absolutely. Well, that happens anywhere that happens in, you know, IBM where, two people are working closely together for however much time. And yeah, for sure. But there's just something more interesting to me about it when it's curling. I don't know. I don't know why, but all right. Anyways, well, I digress. <laughs> here's why it's because it's the only interesting thing about curl because the actual sport isn't interesting whatsoever. No. So the only thing interesting about it is speculating if the mixed doubles couples are sleeping with each other. Yeah. I don't really need to see bocce on ice or whatever it, you know, whatever it really is. Did you, uh, did you, did you watch the commercials? Were you glued to commercials? So, okay. Again, the first, the first half of the first quarter, I was in my car. So I didn't, I was listening <laughs> to the radio. Right. 
By the way, you know, maybe this was me trying to justify, hey, it's not as bad when I'm not watching. I'm listening on the radio. I will say Kevin Harlan is so freaking good. So the radio broadcast, I mean, Kevin Harlan and Kurt Warner, that's a tough broadcast to beat. So I'm listening on the radio. Um, So here's what I'll say commercial wise, the ones that stuck out. So the Larry David commercial, and I'm a huge, huge curb Larry David fan. So the Larry David commercial where he got everything wrong. I think that one was very good. I like the one, and uh, this was Rocket Mortgage. The one about Barbie, did you see the one? So it was all about the real estate market. And so yeah, you had- no, like I, I, no, I missed it because I remember like, uh, I caught like a part of it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was basically Barbie, I think was either trying to sell a house or buy one. And then you had better offer Betty. You had flipper skipper who was the mm-hmm. house flipper and they had Ken and they brought in all these different people to basically just do a little critique on the craziness of the housing market, which I thought was pretty funny. And then the other one, just off the top of my head that I liked was the one where all the NFL players kind of came through the TV and they became characters and they played football in the, in the kid's house. I thought that one was pretty good. That was good. So probably for me, my standout was Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen. That was good. Reminiscing. And you could, you know, that's pretty plug and play. I mean, you know, it's going to be there. They're so funny. Like you're like, I don't even know where you're going to go with this, but you guys sitting there doing any sort of flashbacks is obviously instantly funny so i was already in and then they did a nice little button at the end with him marrying the ghost i was like okay that's it sold well done so any any other ones beside that i did see that one that's Um, the one that stood out to me because i remember i wasn't in a like a high peak mental state here (laughs) i was you you know so i don't drink soda anymore i drink water coffee and alcohol yeah Um, but I used to, I used to drink for years, diet soda, like all the time. I, I was like, you know, it's diet soda, right? No sugar in it. It's, what can be wrong, right? <laughs> How could it be bad for you? Um, and I would have like maybe a couple a day, but it was like a routine. I, I feel like every day, middle of the day, I would have a few diet, diet, whatever's. And, uh, and then at one, some point years ago, I just, I realized I'm like, this is terrible. I don't know why I'm putting this stuff in my body. So I just stopped and it wasn't till yesterday. I can't tell you last time I had like a soda, but for some reason, if I'm really sick or really hung over, like I was, I wanted ginger ale. Oh yeah. I drank Coke zeros and we had them just stocked up in our, in our, uh, you know, I'm, I'm domesticated. So we have a garage fridge now. Uh, they're in the garage fridge because when we had people over for Christmas, man, I probably had two or three of those yesterday all in there. Well, that's, uh, that's also kind of like your, your sick, sick food and drinks. My wife and I were talking about this because so both of my parents worked at hospitals, uh, mm-hmm. as I'm growing up. So my mom's a nurse, my dad's a social worker. So you know how you're sick from school, you're staying at home, you're watching uh, Price is right. And, yep. and you're, uh, you're eating and drinking all your sick food. And it was always ginger ale or Sprite. It was always a lot of popsicles and a lot of jello. So it's all that yellow. Egg. Yep. Yep. Chicken Clear noodle soup stuff. and saltines. I remember that. That was like the go-to. That's what last night as I was driving around during the first quarter of the Super Bowl. that's what I was picking up. I was picking up Valentine's that I couldn't find saltine crackers for my wife, Gatorade for me and baby food. That's what I was doing during the Super Bowl. <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> oh yeah, man. This is what's that movie. This is 40. And I'm yeah. about to be 40. That's, that's what that is. That's what that is. hundred percent. That's when I get, I get that more now, right? The older you get when you're like, uh, if I watch that when I'm 20, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Okay. We get a bunch of old guys. And now you're like, no, no. Yeah. It's a, it's an in-between. You got to let go of the past, but we, we struggle to let go of the past as I proved to myself on Saturday. Well, you think you think you still got it. You think you can still play contact football, but uh, you cannot. That's where See, I know I don't have it though, especially with, with hard alcohol, I would be done. And, uh, I'm telling you like on my radio show, these guys, they were like, they they thought I was lying when I told them, cause we were talking like, how, you know, how, what do you, how do you drink on the weekends? What do you have? And blah, blah, blah. And for a while there, when my son was a really bad sleeper, he's gotten better now, but I would say, this is how we drink. Uh, put the kids down. I'd have one beer. 
and I'd usually crack the second, take one sip and pass out. And then almost every, every day, the next morning I wake up, there's a full glass of wine and there's like 92% of a beer because I, I had taken one sip and I just pass out. And I was being hundred percent serious. Like, don't get me wrong. I still would love to be able to drink like that. And, and I could, like, if it was a party, I could get after it, but it's more about you're punishing yourself. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. it's fun to drink. I love drinking. Don't get me wrong, but you're punishing yourself and your family because you know, <laughs> as you mentioned with yesterday and I was sick, it wasn't from drinking, but like when you're sick or you're hung over, your life sucks. Uh, it's awful. It's awful. I, you know, you know, um, you repeat the same mistakes over and over. And then it's just that, like when you get a nice buffer of time that goes by and then it all melts away, you forget about it. I literally, I don't know. We, me and my wife, we were talking, we were, what, like, what were we thinking? How did we think? I don't have answers to any of that. I know that I was having a good time. I wanted to keep the good times rolling. And that's as far as it went in my mind. And I thought magically I would sleep for four or five hours, have some uh, aspirin, over the counter aspirin. And then all of a sudden I'd be, uh, be ready to enjoy the day. And that's so far from what happened so far. Yeah. And a two hour car ride. I can only imagine oh. that that just had to be absolute hell. We hit. And then like three quarters of the way through, we hit some stop and go. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kill me right now. I'm like, I cannot do this. I cannot, you know, it's one thing when you're just going, your nostrils, you're just kind of like going at certain speed, right? Just cruising. 70, 80, 80 miles an hour. You're just like, all right, this is fine. But when you start pumping them down, heavy braking, I'm like, this is going to be the end of me. This is it. But you know what, Charlie, it's in the past. We don't, we don't need to live yes. in the past. I'm a new person now. And, uh, and I don't do stuff like that anymore. So it's nothing to worry about. I'm fine. I'm fine. All good, buddy. And, and so unfortunately football season is now in the past. So we're going to have to figure out, mm -hmm something for our gambling uh wants and needs because i'm pretty much i love gambling football and that's the only sport i really really enjoy gambling although i'll do ncaa tournament so we're we're a month or so away from that but i was thinking uh because my guy kenny wallace i'm doing a lot of nascar talk these days we do have mm -hmm. the big one the great american race the uh, daytona 500 coming up this sunday so i was gonna throw it to you like this so i'm, I'm on DraftKings here so I have just, uh, you know, the winner, um, kind of the futures bet type deal. Okay. So do you want to just, do you want to pick a driver? Do you want to pick one? And then, so if the dude doesn't win, just whoever finishes better, the guy I pick or the guy you pick, is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. And we should say to the audience, uh, I know nothing about NASCAR. I have never watched a NASCAR race. <laughs> that's critical to this story. So go ahead. Okay. So that being said, I did cover a lot of NASCAR when I was in Michigan and now I'm back into it because of my guy, Kenny Wallace. I did watch the clash at the Coliseum, which was two weeks ago in LA. So do you know any of the driver's names? I'll know. I'll know. them. Yeah. If you read some off, I'll, okay. I'll recognize the names for sure. Okay. So I don't know if you wanted to just pick one like a, like a dart or I'll just read them. Okay. So the best odds, Denny Hamlin plus eight fifty. Chase Elliott plus 1000, Kyle Larson plus 1100, Joey Logano, he won the clash plus 1200, Ryan Blaney plus 1200, William Byron plus 1500, Brad Keselowski. And I'll just go through Kurt Busch, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, Alex Bowman, Austin Dillon, Bubba Wallace, Martin Truex Jr. The list goes on and on. Okay. I have a side question if I was really going to bet this. Is there, you know, they do like, don't they do they, they have a point standing and all that? Yes. Who, who are the top guys in there? Okay. So this is the first race of the year. Oh, and that's what, that's what mm. makes Daytona so mm. crazy is in NASCAR, their biggest race of the year is their first race of the year. So this is where I'll be exposed. I'm pretty sure Kyle Larson won the championship last year. Let me, let me just give me one second. 2021 mm. NASCAR points standings. So here we go. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. So Kyle Larson was the champ. Martin Truex Jr. second. Denny Hamlin third. Chase Elliott fourth. Kevin Harvick fifth. Brad Keselowski sixth. Uh, Blaney, Joey Logano. I think that's Kyle Busch and William Byron. 
Okay. So I'm going to go based on what you told me with it. And I just pulled, I pulled up a similar uh, odd sheet here so I can actually look at this. All right. I'm going to just kind of get in that top third and pick a name. Cause I think that's the proper way to bet this. Um, okay. I'm going to go with knowing nothing that I know. Hmm. Man, that's a tough one. <laughs> Isn't it funny when you're picking something and you don't even know anything about it? <laughs> well, it's just, it's, it's almost like you can pick the top guys. Maybe we should have picked three, but that make it even more difficult. No, but yeah, we're not going, we're not going to win show place. <laughs> well, you, you actually can like DraftKings. I've never gambled on NASCAR, but they have winner and then top three and top five. So you oh, can wow. bet. Yeah. For those as well. All right. I am going. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm You're going really with, a lot of I'm going with, I'm going with Brad. Keselowski. Keselowski. <laughs> That's a good pick. I believe he's from, uh, I believe he's from Michigan. I'm going um, Brad Keselowski. There's my guy, Brad Keselowski. Lock it in. Nice. And Brad Keselowski, what? So last year, I think he was, he was, uh, he finished sixth. Um, I'm going to go ahead. And th this dude, I only know this because uh, my guy, Kenny Wallace, is a big dirt racer. This guy might be the best pure racer there is because he can race asphalt, dirt. He can race any type of car. So I'm going to go with Kyle Larson, who is the returning champ, uh, points champ, NASCAR cup champ. And he has okay. the third best odds. So I'm going Kyle Larson. You're going Brad Keselowski. Brad Keselowski. So I'm at plus what? 1600. You're uh plus 1600. I'm plus 1100. Okay. Okay. This is, this is the classic, um, you know, throw a dart, pick a stock. Is that beat the analyst? You're going to be the analyst. I'm the dart thrower. So I like it. it. And then moving forward. So this will be a good, you know, because we have this show and I do like betting on college basketball in theory. The only reason I don't love college basketball the way I like football is there's too many games and that Correct. every night I could, I could bet on 10 games if I wanted to. Uh, so it's a little crazy when I start looking up the, the, the rosters of, of, you know, college of Charleston, but so after this week, after uh, Daytona 500, we'll, we'll get into college basketball. Yeah. I want to do that. Also, this will help me in my research for when I go to Vegas, cause I'll be there the first weekend of March madness. And I need to know how to properly place the four to 16 parlays that I'm about to throw down. So nice. this will, this will be a good runway into that. Um, let's spend our time on college basketball, maybe a little NBA. If there's something yeah. we really like as NBA, you know, heats up trade, trade deadlines done. Uh, yeah, I like it. I like it done, buddy. All right. Well, Hey, good show. Super bowl recap. Good Super stuff. Bowl recap. Hey, you feel, you feel better now. You and the family. You as well. Thank you. I did it to myself, but thank you. It happens, man. That Nora, that norovirus, look it up. It'll get you. Yeah. It'll get you. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you next week. See you, man.